So let's just say this has been a really exciting year for Apple products. I spend a lot of time talking about the iPad Pro on this channel, and to me, this is the most exciting piece of Apple tech. But my main workhorse is still my MacBook Pro. And I know a lot of you guys got one of the new M1 MacBooks, or you're thinking about investing in one of the M2 MacBooks later this year. So what better time to talk about some of the best apps for those Macs? Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up, guys? It is great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So, like I said, the MacBook Pro is still my main workhorse, mainly because of Final Cut Pro, which I need to edit these videos, and also because multitasking on the iPad still isn't as good as it is on Mac OS. The way I use my devices is basically my MacBook Pro lives on my desk, it sits there in clamshell mode, and it stays there. And it's connected to this LG Ultrawide that I have here, which is insanely useful for video editing, but which also really improves your multitasking. And I will show you later which little app I use to utilize all of that extra screen real estate. Everything else, everything that doesn't need to happen at this desk, I do on my iPad Pro. Except, of course, if I go on a longer trip and I need to edit my videos, I'll take my MacBook with me, which is the main reason I have a MacBook and not a Mac Mini. Now, obviously, there's a ton of great apps out there and it's impossible to cover them all in one video. So what I'll do in this video is I'll take you through the apps I use every day, multiple times a day. But before we do, I'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsor, Wondershare. I think most of you will know them from their very well-known Filmora video app. I'm personally a big fan of their data recovery solutions. So when they reached out to me to test their PDF editor, of course I said yes. Wondershare PDF Element is an all-in-one PDF solution. I've been testing it for a couple of weeks now, and I do have to admit it does do it all. You can create, edit, convert, and annotate forms and documents. I'm a huge fan of PDF editors myself. I mean, 90% of the documents I get sent these days are PDFs, and it's such a pain in the neck trying to convert them to Word and then back to PDF. The format always gets messed up. So being able to do all your edits straight inside the PDF is so much easier. All right, so let me just open up a random PDF. In my daytime business, I'm a lobbyist. So we'll just grab some boring regulation to demonstrate some of the features. And of course, the number one feature every PDF tool should have is markup. You can highlight text, you can underline the important parts, and one of my favorite features is the sticky note. Mainly because you can stick them anywhere on the document where they make sense to you and write your notes or comments. And you can even color code them, which is super useful. But of course, you can also just add text comments if you prefer. If you need to sign a document, no problem. You can just add your signature using your mouse and stick it right on the document. By the way, it is also available for the iPad Pro, so you could also use your Apple Pencil to do this. You can redact documents, which is very useful for me if I want to use a document in my video, but I want to black out certain parts. Another cool feature is the ability to add checkboxes and drop-down menus that you can customize to your liking. Now let's say you're working on a PDF form. You can even extract the data to Excel, for instance, which can be a real time saver. You can convert documents to different formats, but the coolest feature, in my opinion, is that you can perform OCR text recognition on a scanned document and make it editable. You just choose the language and presto. You can try it for free. There's a link in the description where you can get up to 50% off if you decide to purchase it. All right, these next couple of apps are all about making my workflow faster and more efficient. First up is a little app called Better Snap Tool. Like I said, my MacBook Pro lives in clamshell mode and I have it hooked up 24 seven to this ultra wide monitor. Being able to very quickly organize my windows makes everything so much easier and it helps me utilize that big screen for multitasking. So by default, you can snap your windows in one of the four corners by simply dragging them there, or you can split your screen by dragging it to one of the sides and you can make any window full screen again by dragging it to the top of the screen but you can also set your own snap area. So what I did for my ultra wide is I designed three equally sized snap areas across the screen so that it feels like I have three monitors, which is super useful for my work. It's not free, but I've been using it for years and it's been worth the few bucks that you have to pay for it. By the way, guys, I do a lot of app reviews on this channel, not just for the Mac, but also for the iPhone and the iPad. So if you're not a subscriber and you enjoy this type of content, hit that button right there. And since you're down there, hit the little bell so you know when those videos are up. The next app on my list of daily apps is Alfred. 
Alfred is kind of like Apple Spotlight, but better. I hate having to click my way through my Mac to find apps and files. I just hit option and space and Alfred appears. All I need to do is type a few letters and it will suggest what I need. If instead I type a question, it will immediately start a Google search. If I want to find a file, I hit space and search for my file. Alfred also has a back office where you can see all of your stats. You know, if you're a nerd like me and you care about that stuff. Next up is another absolute time saver and probably one of my favorite apps of all time across my devices and that's Just Press Record. The name says it all. It's a giant red button that starts recording as soon as you hit it. But what is really neat is that it will also transcribe your recordings and it does a great job. What makes the app perfect though is the fact that it syncs across all my devices. So whether I'm at my desk, on my iPad, on my phone, or even my Apple Watch, I can always just press record and all of my quick notes will be in one place. For drafting long form content, I'm old school. I like to use Microsoft Word which I'm not gonna go into. I mean, if you don't know Microsoft Word, we can't be friends. But whenever I wanna collaborate with my team or with a fellow creator, I use Google Docs. It's just a really solid collaborative tool that lets you work together on a document in real time. Oftentimes, I'll jump on a quick Zoom call with a friend or a colleague and make changes in the document while we discuss it. You can literally see the changes being made on screen. And when everybody's happy, end the Zoom call, document done. We used to send documents back and forth a million times, not to mention all the misinterpreted comments. Such a waste of time. And this makes it so much easier. Of course, when you wanna use Google Docs, it's easiest to also use Google Drive to store everything. You get 15 gigabytes for free. And if you need more, you can always buy like 100 gigabytes for $2 a month. Plus it's a good idea to back up your stuff anyway. Relying only on hard drives is never a good idea. I also use Dropbox as a second backup simply because that's what I used first and it's so cheap to buy storage. Next up are two messaging apps I use every single day. The first one is WhatsApp. This is probably the most popular messaging app here in Europe. I know in the US it's not as big, but I think it's getting more popular with you guys as well. The only downside of using WhatsApp is that you need to have your phone connected. It doesn't work as a standalone app. This is not the case for Telegram, which is the other messaging app I use daily. This app works across devices and you don't need your phone, which is very useful. Telegram allegedly has better encryption and it's also a little different in terms of design. It's a little more playful with different stickers, like this peach for instance. When you know, you know. One app I like to use in tandem with these two messaging apps is Skitch. Skitch is actually owned by Evernote, but it works great as a standalone app. You can just quickly snap your entire screen or you can simply draw a box around whatever area of your screen you want and it will snap a high res image. You can then add arrows, boxes, some text, or you can scramble parts of it if you want. Straight from the app, you just drag it into any other app and send it. All of your snaps are collected and stored within Sketch. Speaking of Evernote, I used to use Evernote all the time, but more recently I've switched most of my daily planning to Notion simply because Notion is much more customizable. You can really make this exactly how you want it. I like to keep things very simple, so I just created a dashboard with a to-do list with some drop-down menus that help me organize my work. I will just put the task, set the priority, choose a category, business, YouTube, or personal, and then check whether it's not started, in progress, or done. I also set it up so that whenever I change priority to high, it will move it to the top. Also, tasks will disappear from this view when I check them off. Down here, I have a journal which I set as a calendar so I can keep track of when I journal and easily find my journals on those days. I created a journaling template, so all I have to do is click that and drag the journal to the appropriate day and start typing. You can basically do whatever works for you in Notion. And of course, Notion is free. All right, moving on to ScreenFlow. Now this app is not free, but it's really good. I use it for all of my screen recordings. I know you can use QuickTime for that and it's already baked into Mac OS, but ScreenFlow gives you far more options. You can set up your recording so you can record parts of the screen, which is useful when you're on an ultra wide like I am, and you can choose your resolution. But ScreenFlow is not just a screen recorder, it's actually an entire editing suite. A lot of people use ScreenFlow to record their video tutorials. It's not cheap, but it works very well. Finally, I use the Adobe Suite almost every day. I love using Lightroom for quick touch-ups of my photos, and I can use it across all my devices, where I can access my entire photo library. All of my audio for YouTube videos is processed through Adobe Audition, 
which has all these useful plugins, making that a very painless, almost automated exercise. One of the coolest features of this app is that you can lengthen or shorten any songs to the exact duration you need, and it will sound like the song was meant to be that way. Just drag the song in there, enable remix, and choose your time. You may have noticed that the same song has been playing in the background of this video, and I'm sure you didn't hear any weird cuts or transitions. And that's all done automatically by Adobe Audition. The Adobe Suite is not cheap either, but if you're serious about editing your creative work, it's definitely a solid investment. All right, guys, those are pretty much the apps I use every day. I hope this video was useful to you, and maybe you found one or two apps you didn't know yet. If you did, give it one of these. It really does help the channel. And feel free to subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.